Right, guys, so um, as I said, I'm going to start um, I'm going to start us off with a little bit of mobility. So if you can all come down onto the floor or onto your mat, we're going to start off with um, a glute bridge. So from the side, lay down onto your mat. And we're going to go for 30 seconds. You're going to push your legs up and raise your arms over your head at the same time. Just to warm the glutes up. So from the side. Uh, keep going. Just going to check everyone can see me okay. And the next exercise is coming up into a straightforward glute and then alternating legs. Lift, lift the alternate legs off. So left leg off the floor and straighten it just above, just level with the knee of the other one. So not too high, not too low. Keeping the hips really up, firing them glutes up. Keep going. Wow. Okay, stop there guys. Next up is ankle breaks. So stand up, back to your standing position. From the side, right, we did this last week if anyone was in, we're going to duck over our front toe. So really looking to get some range in that front ankle. You should feel it through the front of here. What it's going to do is give us loads of range when we get into our heavy wet exercises. Keep working that range, push it right down as far as you can. And switch legs. Pushing that range, really good. Okay, next one. Down onto the mat into a high press up position. So, like uh, as if you're at the start of a press up position, you're going to come forward as far as you can with your left leg, and you're going to elbow drop. Now, the first one's going to be hard, but if you get to here, that's fine. If you can get to the floor, great. And then you're going to rock back on that front hamstring, and then switch legs. So, same elbow drop. Rock back and then switch legs again. So you're coming back to your high plank position every single time. Keep going, keep switching. Really good. Last one each side. So next one, back into the high press-up position. This time you're going to bring the left foot forward and try and stand up into a high lunge position. If you can, you're going to hook the right elbow over the left thigh and breathe into this twist. If this is too much of a struggle for you, just hold a high lunge position. So from the side, it looks like this. Here, if you can't do it, and if you can, hook around the other side so you can see me. Good. And if you've done that, switch legs. So right leg out in front, hook the left elbow over the right thigh, and breathe into that. Try and really twist round. Good stuff. Last breath. Got another one coming in. But, okay, next one, down onto all fours again. This one's called donkey kicks. So, tabletop position, you're going to take your right knee in towards your belly and then kick it high. Keep 
keep going. So you really squeeze your glute up as you do this. Bring it in, kick it up. You should really feel that working in the glute and the hamstring. So, last couple. And switch legs. And in, kick it up. Well done, last couple. And stop there. Hopefully everyone can feel that in their glute, working. Next one up onto our feet. We've got a reverse lunge, so as, as Jackie said, a little bit of emphasis on single leg work today. So just part of the warm up, you're gonna reverse lunge and come up into a high knee. Keep on the same leg for 20 seconds, so off you go. Really use the front and the back leg to keep you stable and push up. Last one. Good stuff. Switch sides. Push back, step up. Really good. So starting to activate our single leg work. Really good. Last one, guys. And stop there. Next one is our leg swings. Now, if you have a wall and you feel you need it, hold on. If you can, just to activate that single leg work, swing some leg swings. So really just as high as you can. If it's just little, that's fine. If you can use your arms for balance, really kick it out, go for it. And uh, switch sides. Activate that standing leg, fire it up, fire the glutes. Really work it. Last one. Good. Next one is speed skates to tap. So you're coming down into a bit of a squat position on a single leg. You're going to tap to the side, tap behind. The deeper you squat, so if you, off you go guys, I need 20 seconds of this. The deeper you squat on that standing leg, the harder it is. Try and get some sort of bend in that standing leg. Really work to stabilize. Great stuff, and switch legs. Squat down, standing leg. Start to maybe really push your range out. Really good, not easy. Our front quads burning, I hope everyone else is this. And stop there. And last one from me is a single leg RDL. So it's, a, it's a an arabesque if you know it, arms out if you want, straight leg into the hamstring. If you want to have your hands on your hips, whatever's easiest, and come through to a high knee if you've got the balance. So we're going to do 20 seconds each side. The so same leg for 20 seconds. Hopefully, you might not touch your toe down. And switch sides. Last set, guys. Fire up that glute, fire up the hamstring, get the balance going. Really good. And stop there. Nice one. Well done, guys. That's my mobility slash warm up all done. I'll hand over to Jackie for the session. 
All right, guys, hope you guys are warmed up now. Um, so as Laura mentioned, we're gonna focus on unilateral movement today. So unilateral movement is basically either single leg or single arm movement. Um, so this is really important, um, not just for athletes, but just for training in general. When you focus on one arm or one leg moving, it's gonna specify the strength on that side so that you're getting even training rather than having doing something like a squat where the dominant met leg might take over. So this is a really important um, technique um, and something that hopefully you guys will enjoy and get some new ideas and also be able to perfect some of the exercises that you already know. So we're gonna start with Tabata timing. Tabata timing is 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. We're gonna have four different exercises, but basically you're gonna go eight sets because we're gonna do right leg and left leg separately, all right? So first exercise we're gonna do, you don't have to do it yet, I'm just gonna go through the exercises quick and then we'll start the timer. So we're gonna start with a low sprinter. So for the low sprinter, you're dropping down into a lunge, weights on the front leg, and you're just gonna bring the foot forward to tap, all right? So you wanna really load that front leg, Speed is the key for this one as well to get the heart rate up. All right, so low sprinters, then high sprinters. So for your high sprinter, weight still on that front leg, come up and extend the leg, tap at the top. Okay, third one is a high knee repeater hop. So again, weight is loaded on the front leg. You want to generate power by loading and then hop, bring the leg through to ex ex accelerate and explode into that hop. Last one is a pistol squat variation, a single leg squat variation. So this one's a little bit different. Um, so you're gonna start down here. <clears throat> Weights on the front leg still, back leg is untucked. You're gonna drive through the front heel, coming up, and then coming back down, all right? So I'll go over more of the technique as we get through, but I just wanted to show you guys the exercises, know what to expect. All right, so we're gonna go two times through on each leg. Got it? All right, so let's get our music going. Let's get our timer on. Eight minutes of work, starting with low sprinters on the right leg. Are we ready? Let's go. So low sprinters, so load the leg, and try to keep your hip at the same height the entire time. So glutes and quad of the right leg should be burning. Almost there. Two, one, good. 10 second rest, and we're going for the left leg. <coughs> In five, four, three, two, let's go. <coughs> so again, weights on that front leg. Keep it loaded, so we want pressure to be building up in that front leg. Come on, push. Quick taps. Three, two, one. Rest. Right leg high knee repeater, or high sprinter, sorry. <laughs> so this time we're gonna drop back and then come up. Ready? Let's go. So drop and up. <laughs> Driving through that front heel as we extend and bring that back foot to tap at the front. Almost there. Rest. Left leg, high sprinter. Three, two, let's go. So not only does this focus on training one, lot, one leg, it also forces you to balance and work those stabilizing muscles in the hip. Two, one. My knee repeater hop, we're really picking it up now, guys. Explosive power with this one. Right leg forward, left leg back, here we go. So you're gonna bring the left leg through as you drive up. So if a high hop doesn't work for you, even just a little bit of a hop is fine. Whatever you feel is best for you. Two, one, good, rest. Left leg. So you wanna keep your chest up and open. 
and drive. Here we go. So see how high you can reach as you come up. Really explode through that floor and get nice and tall. Almost there, we got five seconds. Rest. All right, pistol squat variation. So you're down in almost like a kneeling position. Here we go, drive up through the right leg and then down. So this one requires some focus to really dig through the right heel and then drop back down. So the left foot is just for balance. Feet are nice and close together. You should feel this in your right glute. Rest, switch legs. So left leg is forward. Right foot, bottom of the foot, or top of the foot is flat on the ground to start. Here we go, drive up and then back down. So if this feels easy, you can also lift that leg up and then try to drop down here. Looking so good, guys. Five seconds. Two. One. Nice work. All right. Back to the beginning. Low sprinters. Shake those legs out. Five seconds. Low sprinter. Leg, right leg forward. Let's go. So stay low. So we've gone through these exercises one time now, guys. So here's your chance to add speed and perfect the form, so drop those hips low, guys. Get them low, get them low, and hold them low. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Two, one, good, left leg. Shake it out, you got 10 seconds. All right, so if you feel like your hips are low, I know you can drop them lower, come on. Ready? Let's go, drop them low, keep them low, drop them low, keep them low. So hips stay the same height. Come on, how low can you hold? It's like the limbo. How low can you go? Four, three, two, one. Good. High sprinters. So this time you're dropping low and coming up. Ready? Let's go. So again, this is all about speed and loading the power through that front leg. So drop the hips and then explosive power as you drive up. Three, two, one, rest. Shake it out, left leg coming. Ready? Let's go. So even with the high sprinter, you want the weight to stay on the front leg, guys. So again, this is unilateral training. So that back leg is just for balance. You shouldn't be shifting your weight back and forth. Weight stays on that front leg. Rest. High knee repeater hops. Go oh guys, you're doing brilliant. Keep it going. That side, let's go. Come on. How much power can you load in that quad? And how much power can you release to reach to the top? Come on, high as you can go. I know you guys can jump higher than that, come on. And rest. Left leg, 10 second rest, shake it out. You guys are doing amazing. I see some tired legs, but some powerful legs. Let's go, left leg, come on, push, 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 go, 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 go. Come on. Knees up to the chest, guys. Looking good, Rebecca. Come on, Richard, keep that leg forward. Weight stays on the front leg. Amazing, guys. Dara, looking awesome. Rest. All right, pistol squat variation. So guys, remember, one foot is flat. Here we go. So drive through that front heel and then drop back down. So weight stays on the front leg. You should feel it in that glute. Keep the chest up as you drive. Three, two, one, rest. Left leg. Last 20 seconds before a water break, guys. 
Here we go. Go. So drive up and back down. If you're doing this correctly, you should really feel that left glute working right now. Feet should be pretty close together and really pushing through. Push off of that ground really, really nice. Nice, Jade. Rest. All right. Shake it out, grab water if you need it. Well done, guys. If anyone was like me, feel like that. to some strength exercises, upper body and lower body for this, all right? So you guys are gonna need your weights. So we have two different exercises. We're gonna hit right side and left side. So the first one, you're gonna need your lighter weight that's gonna be your curl and press weight. So what it is, you can do a back lunge, and as you come up, curl, press the dumbbell over your head, and then straight back into your back lunge, okay? So up, curl, press, drop down. So this requires balance as you're driving up. All right, so then you're gonna need um, maybe a little bit heavier if, you're, if you have a strong upper body. One arm, single arm row. So just rowing up and back down, okay? Then we're gonna go to the left side, same thing. Back lunge, curl and press. Left arm, single arm row, all right? So if you have a dumbbell, great. If you have a kettlebell, that can work too. Um, even if you have a backpack, you can even kind of hold that here. Back lunge and then hold it with both arms. Curl it and press it up above your head. All right, so lots of different ways to do this one, guys. To still challenge the muscles, still challenge your balance, and still force you to stabilize. Deal? Good? Everybody looking good? Everybody set to go? 45 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest. Guys, remember, we want to fatigue these muscles. That's how change happens. So choose a weight that's going to challenge you after 45 seconds. Got it? All right, 45 seconds on the clock. We're going to go three times through. Back lunge, curl, and press. Ready? Let's go. So back lunge, come up, curl, press, and then straight back into that back lunge. So to challenge the balance, try not to tap that leg down at any point. Chest stays up and really brace the core as you drive that weight towards the ceiling. Looking really good, guys. Ten seconds. Keep going. Beautiful. Two. One. Good. Shake it out. Fifteen second rest here. So we're going to stick with that same side into a single arm row. For your row, your back is flat. Your chest is out. Pushing the hip, your shoulder down towards the hip so you get lat activation. Let's go. So chin stays tucked. So that means you're looking at the ground. You're not looking up straight ahead. As I mentioned last time, as the chin is tucked, that keeps the core activated. Looking so good, guys. We have 15 seconds. Keep going, keep going. Flat backs, guys, flat backs. Gary, try to flatten that back out a little bit. Press the chest out. And really, almost like you're arching your back a little bit. That's better. Almost there, guys. Looking good, Jess. Looking good, Miriam. Rest. All right, other side. Back lunge, curl and press. In five seconds. Let's go. So back lunge, straight into a curl, drive that weight up. So this forces muscle control because you're having to balance and stabilize as the weight moves through the space 
you're really focusing on controlling those muscles. 15 seconds, come on. As you're driving up, really dig through that front heel to help you press up. Almost there. Three, two, one, rest. Single arm row, guys. So really important here, flat back. When we round our back, that pushes, puts pressure on the lower back, which we don't want. So squeeze the and press your chest out. Let's go. So shoulders should be staying the same height the entire time, guys. So you shouldn't be coming up and back down. Same height. Push the shoulder towards the hip. That's going to make you give you flat activation. So if you're pushing the shoulder towards the hip, you should feel all those muscles down the side under your armpit working. Come on, almost there. Keep digging, guys. Flat backs, flat backs. That's the key here. If you're feeling pressure in the lower back, you're probably arching. So really squeeze the shoulder blades. Rest. All right, back to the beginning. So back lunge, curl, press with your right side again. If you feel like the weight is too light, let's kick it up. We got two more rounds, guys. Ready? Let's nice. keep it going. Doing brilliantly. Here we go. So guys, we're working for muscle fatigue by the end of each set. So if you're feeling that this weight is easy after 45 seconds, you need to push yourself to a heavier weight. On the other hand, if you're feeling like you're really challenging yourself, just be careful that you're not going to injure yourself, all right? So be smart about the weight that you're choosing. Five seconds, guys. Rest. All right, single arm row. All right, come down flat back. You got five seconds. Press that chest out. Shoulders push down. Squeeze the shoulder blades. Here we go. All right, guys, this is a really important one to keep the form correct on. So press that chest out. Dave, press that chest out more. Flat back, flat in the back. Yeah, that's better. Looking good, Carrie. Nice, Kara. Leah, looking really good. You guys are looking amazing. Great control. Almost there, almost there. Come on, we got this, guys. Keep going, keep going. Two, one, rest. Other side, back lunge, curl, press, left side. Totally normal, guys, if you can't feel your arms right now. <laughs> Let's go. Jackie's a beast when it comes to upper body, as you probably realize. Compare yourself to yourself, not to her. She's an animal. Looking <laughs> so good, guys. Come on, muscle control here. 20 seconds. So, guys, I know this upper body stuff might be uncomfortable for some of you, but this is how we improve. You're pushing yourself outside your comfort zone so that you can get both physically stronger and mentally stronger. A full body workout is really gonna help rest. Single arm row. Okay, five seconds. Ready, single arm row. Let's go. Come on, guys, keep digging. Everybody's looking amazing. Make sure you keep that hinge in your hips, guys. So what I mean by that 
as you're staying bent over so you're not starting to drift up, all right? You should feel this in your quads and your hamstrings as your legs are stabilizing you in that hinge position. So good. Come on, almost there, guys, almost there. Keep going. Lara, careful, flatten your back a little bit. Rest. All right, one more round, guys, one more round. Are we feeling good? Thumbs up. You feeling amazing? All right, back to the back lunge. Let's go. Last round, team. So this is where you perfect that movement. We've had two rounds to figure out how our muscles should feel. This time, we're really working for that extra fatigue. As we fatigue our muscles, that means they are getting stronger. The muscle fibers are literally breaking apart to repair stronger. 10 seconds, come on. Rest, rest. Doing great guys, keep it going. Right arm, single arm row, guys. This is your last set of right single arm rows. And I can't stress enough flat back. Let's go. I know I keep repeating it, but that's because it's so important to have that flat back. If you rouse, you're going to hurt yourself. So really press that chest out. Squeeze those shoulder blades together. Come on, keep pushing the shoulder down towards the hip. If you're feeling all of your muscles on that right side under your armpit working, that's exactly what you should feel. Come on, almost there. Five seconds. Rest. Left side, back lunge, curl, press. In five seconds, come on guys, last side on the left side. Here we go. So really focus on driving through that heel as you come up. You almost want to try to dig a hole in the ground and then reach for the ceiling. Keeping the chest up and open. So shoulders shouldn't hinge forward too much as you drop into that lunge. Looking so good. Rob looking really nice. Tanya looking good. Lucy crushing it with that giant kettlebell. Amazing. Keep going, guys. Looking really good, Bailey. Left side, single arm row. Last 45 seconds before water team. So feet are nice and wide in that squat stance for this. It's almost like you're in that ready three-point stance. Let's go. Come on. So you want to be sinking low into that squat. As you sink low and push your hips back, that's gonna open up the hips and allow more range. All of this is gonna protect the lower back and give you more hip mobility. So even though technically this is an upper body exercise, we're working the quads, hamstrings, glutes, core to stabilize everything. Almost there, three, two, one, nice work guys, rest. Shake it out. Oh man. Doing brilliant guys, well done. Really tough. <laughs> All right guys, we have one more set to bring us through the end. So we're gonna do uh, four exercises, two times through. I know we're kind of getting tight on time here. It's 12.40 slash 5.40, so we want to try to keep this uh, under an hour, closer to 45 minutes. So, we're going to do 
two movements that are going to be more plyometric, and we're going to pair them with a strength movement. So first one is no way more plyometric. It's a speed skater to a single leg deadlift, all right? So you're going to hop over and then down into your deadlift, all right? So take your time on these. These are about balance and stability, all right? As you jump tighten your core, that's gonna help stabilize you, okay? So next one, you're gonna grab either your heavier, especially for those guys, heavy weight, we're doing curtsy lunges. So you're just gonna hold the weight here, dropping down, crossing over, all right? You can either hold one in front of you or grab a dumbbell for each hand, okay? So that's curtsy lunges. Weights down, into a plyo move, jump lunges. And then last one, you're gonna grab your weight again. Front lunge into side lunge, alternating legs. So front lunge, 45 degree lunge. Sorry guys, not side lunge. Front lunge, 45 degree lunge. Deal? All right, we're doing 30 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. Ooh. We're gonna try to go at least two times through. See ya. Uh, See what time we got then, and hopefully we'll get to a third one. All right, sounds good, guys. And don't forget, if you have any questions, unmute yourself, wave. Other than that, work hard for these rounds. Let's go. All right, last push here, guys. Thirty seconds on the clock. You're doing speed skater into a single leg deadlift. Ready? <clears throat> and let's go. So you're gonna hop and then drop it down. So guys, I know this is a really tough balance challenge, so if you need to, hop, put your foot down, and then drop into that single leg deadlift. So on your deadlift, you wanna push your hips back and hinge at the hip. So the knee bends, but the knee's not coming forward. You should feel this in your glute. Three, two, one, good, 10 seconds, grab those weights. <clears throat> We're doing curtsy lunges. So if you have strong legs, I need you to grab a heavy weight for this one. Here we go. So chest is up, shoulders stay back, and as you drop down into your lunge, weight shifts back. So I don't wanna see anybody's knee coming forward, all right? Weight is back down into that lunge as your leg crosses over, so you, should, so you should feel this in the glutes, as well as the quads. Five, four, three, two, one. Weight down, jump lunge. Shake those legs out. Here we go. So if jump lunges don't agree with you, just a back lunge is totally fine. Come on guys, looking so good. So drop those arms down and then drive up as you switch legs in the middle. 10 seconds, come on. Come on, explosive movement. Rest. Grab that weight, front lunge to 45 degree lunge. Either two dumbbells or one in front, front, and then 45 degree angle. And then other leg, front, 45 degree angle. So as we go front to side, fatiguing the muscles a little bit more. And especially for squash, that diagonal movement to the corners is something that's really important. Four, three, two, one, rest. All right, back to the beginning, guys. Speed skater to single leg deadlift. Ready? Let's go. So whatever leg is up, that's the hand that you're gonna reach towards your shin with. So push the hips back, reach towards the shin. A lot of control here, guys. So this shouldn't be a fast movement, except for the speed skater. Nice and controlled. 
Keep the chin tucked and look towards your cheek. Keep the chin tucked, rest. Five seconds, grab those weights. Curtsy lunge. Let's go. Come on guys, I wanna see some heavy weights on this one. Especially you squash players. Really drop low, light tap of the knee as you drop it back. And then drive through that front heel to come up. So good guys, 10 seconds. Two, one, rest. Weights down, jump lunge. Three, two, let's go. So remember that chest stays up and open. So you don't want to be coming forward. Make sure you're bending that back leg as well. Come on, throw the hands up. That's going to help you lift as you come through. Really good, guys. Keep that chest open. So good. Nice, Kara. Love the modification. Rest. Front lunge to 45 lunge. Here we go. Front, side. Now, as you come into the lunge, especially you squash players, try to get some speed in and out. So front, side, in, out, push. That's really gonna help your power getting in and out of those corners. Rest. All right, guys, I think you got one more set in ya. Thumbs up. Last set, guys. One more time through, we got this speed skater. Go, guys, keep it going. So when you're doing your single leg deadlift team, chin stays tucked. So you don't want to look up. You want to look towards the shoelace as you tap. Push the hip back and bend the knee, and you'll feel it in your glute. Rest. Curtsy lunges. So again, option one way or two. Let's go. Really sitting back on that heel. Chest is staying up. You guys are looking so strong. This is our last set, so I need you guys to really push. Work for that fatigue. Amazing, guys. Looking good, Jenny. Looking good, Julianne. Love that barbell, that dumbbell that you're using. And rest. <laughs> Jump lunge. Last two exercises. We have one minute of work left in this entire workout. Let's go. Come on, everything you've got left. I need to see it here. We have nothing after this. Dig in. 15 seconds. Explosive power to that ceiling. Five, four, three, two, one. Rest. 30 seconds. Dead. 45 diagonal. Ready? Let's go. Working for that muscle fatigue. Every single rep. Come on. Finish strong. 15. Almost there, team. Come on. Five seconds to the bell. Two, one, rest. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Oh. A little bit sweaty now.
you are hanging around, um, come down onto your mat and um, just get yourself, uh, let me just find my... Okay guys, just come down onto your knees, just right foot forward and just drop into that, that hip flexor. If you, if you want to just sit in this slight stretched position, then feel free. Arms up is an option as well to get that extra stretch through the stomach and the hip flexor. Um, otherwise, like even just rocking is a really good one. Nice move, Jackie. Over to the side for anyone who can see Jackie. Really good. And switch legs. Stiff on this side. Last one. And next one should come through to, so for anyone who can, who come through into sort of a, a pigeon stretch or glute stretch, be out in front. If this is a bit of a struggle for you, then obviously you've got the uh, right foot over the left leg and just twist around to also get the glute. As well, if it stretches a bit too tough on the ability. And some slice. So, stay up on the forearms if uh, on the hands if that's best. If you can come down, that extra flexibility is a little bit one. Maybe even a twist in it is also good, it was like that. And come out of that into some calves, calf workouts. Straight stretch, just and then we'll hand over to Jackie just on the body. So maybe right leg, foot into the side of the quad or up the toe, and just reach forward as far as you can. Pull over to each side if helpful. And switch sides. Relax in this uh, this leg, leg drop out. So it's good. Jackie, anything to add? <laughs> all right, yeah. So uh, we're gonna just come into all all fours, tabletop position again. You're gonna walk your hands forward. Drop the chest down, so keep the hips over the knees so it's not a child's pose. As you drop down, you're gonna feel the stretch in your shoulders and in your upper back. And walk yourself back up. Hands come back under the shoulders. <clears throat> you're gonna take one hand Drop the shoulder down, thread it through, and then push that hand that's on the mat, push it into the mat, pull the shoulder back to get a little bit of an extra twist. So you should feel this in the upper back, kind of around the shoulder blades, maybe in the shoulders a little bit. <laughs> and then come up, and through to the other side. 
So drop down, push that hand into the mat, pull the shoulder back. <clears throat> Good, release. All right, and then you're going to, you can just sit, sit in any sort of comfortable seat, um, cross-legged in a straddle, whatever you wanna do. You're gonna bring your arms out. So just open up and then drop the, sh the thumbs down. So rotate your palms backward and just push your hands back, feeling that chest stretch. And then clasp behind your back if you can. And just lift up as much as you feel comfortable, stretching the shoulders a little bit more. And release. Bring one arm across, stretching your rear delt. So you should feel the stretch all along the back of your shoulder here. Spine stays nice and tall. And then you're going to open up, other side. Spine is nice and tall. Push the hand back towards the shoulder. <clears throat> and release. Big shoulder rolls. <clears throat> and other way. All right, and you should be good. Any other stretches that feel good for you, please go ahead and do them. All right. Well done, guys. Really good session. You worked brilliantly there.